Did yes. anyone ha does anyone have the Let's Go <laughs> series in the, on their shelf? Oh, yeah, well, he good. was probably one of the authors of, of, of some of those. And uh, then, of course, that, those jobs led to, led to the position at Time. Yes. Is that pretty correct? Yes. Um, so I'm just wondering, since we are <laughs> at, in, a, in the hallowed halls of journalism, what did those early journalism jobs teach you, and how did they inform your writing later on? They taught me everything. I went straight mm -hmm. from graduate school to Time magazine. And I think the first thing Time taught me was the existence of an audience. You know, when I was in graduate school, I figured I was writing for a maximum of two people, my <laughs> professor and myself, and quite often one person, myself. <laughs> so I was just trying to amuse myself, to show off, to turn somersaults. Really, I saw words as an, as an end in them, themselves. Mm. And as soon as I joined Time magazine, <clears throat> I was writing articles in New York City drawn from the reports of my colleagues in the field. So every week I'd be writing about a suicide bombing in Beirut for 30 million people. Mm -hmm. And I knew that 30 million people didn't care at all about Pico Aya's pro style. They just wanted to know what happened, what it meant, and what the implications for the world were. Yes. And although Time is not necessarily the most exalted or sophisticated literary magazine, it taught me concreteness, clarity, and compression, and that the really the first thing about journalism or writing of any kind before you get lost is to take the reader by the hand on a shared adventure into something you're both trying to figure out. Interesting. Uh, and uh, to this day, I'm really grateful to Time for giving me the foundations upon which I can bin build any kind of house, uh, I imagine. And also, in those days, a time had one great flaw. These were the early 1980s, which is they were extremely prosperous and therefore very, very generous. So my first year at Time Magazine, I was 25 years old. I'd been there less than a year. And I went and I asked for a three-week vacation. And they said, would you mind taking four weeks? <laughs> uh, which might have been a gentle hint. But it was my <laughs> first trip to Southeast Asia, Thailand, mm -hmm. Burma, Macau, Japan. As soon as I got back to the office, uh, mm -hmm. I went and took another two-week trip to, Japan, uh, to Asia. I came back, I took another three-week trip to Asia. And then, though, I'd been there less than three years. And this is maybe not a precedent that every staff writer of the register <laughs> should follow. But I'd been there less than three years. And I said, now I'm going to, I want to take a six-month leave of absence to write my first book. Again, they very graciously gave it to me, and I spent three months traveling at really high speed across 10 countries in Asia, and three months back at my parents' home in Santa Barbara writing my first book. And of course, after three months of traveling and three months of writing, I knew I couldn't go back to my desk. So then I went to my bosses, testing their patience even further, and said, well, I'm, I'm going to leave now, and I want to go and live in a monastery in Kyoto. And astonishingly, and it might not happen now, they said, <clears throat> would you mind if we sent you a monthly paycheck? And wherever you are, whether you're on a mountaintop in Tibet or in North Korea or in California, you might send us occasional columns and we'll send you a little money, not enough to support you, but enough to keep the wolf from the door. And so really for 14 years, uh, I owe it entirely to Time Magazine that I was able to travel in the world and, and begin to become a, a writer. 